I want to um, talk a little bit just very briefly with you, uh, Julie, on, on learning journeys, learning journals, whatever we, we call them. I, I suppose just a really a very open question, which is, you know, what are learning, what are learning journeys for and, and um, how should we keep them? What, what do you do in your setting? How do they relate to observations? How do they relate to assessment? And kind of how do you see it as fitting into this whole broader ecosystem? Great. So I'm, 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 I'm just going to take that in a slightly different order, if you like, about mm -hmm. assessment and purposes of assessment and then what, what we do. So um, it's, it's really important to notice carefully what children can and can't do and make sure that we respond to that in the moment in the best possible way, that we give children the sort of feedback that really helps them. So that, that's the first thing to say about assessment is the majority of it is in the moment and it's about feedback. And early years practitioners are really good at judging their feedback. So they know that sometimes what they need to do is just stand back and be encouraging and let the child take the lead. They know when they need to maybe step in and give a bit of help or help the child to extend their play or their, their thinking. So that's where a lot of the action is. And the problem is, is that if you are very focused on getting a lot of evidence onto your um, system, you miss the moment with the child. You're not present in the moment. Um, and, and then you miss a lot of stuff. You miss what you could really have been helpfully doing as a practitioner. So, so that, that's the first thing I would say. Um, we think that it is important at Sheringham to capture the uh, significant moments in children's learning. But that isn't happening all of the time. That is happening at kind of a particular point where a practitioner judges that a child is really doing something important. So they might have persevered with something for much longer than they'd ever done before or taken part in something new or done something with a friend, whereas previously they've always played on their own. But what you're looking for is something of importance that probably happens over time and where you can see and that tells the story of the child's progress. So when children first start here, we're noting down things like what their language is like or what their physical skills are like, uh, how they're managing um, in terms of their confidence and being apart from their parents. So one of the things that those little stories, those, they, they, those little vignettes of children's learning can tell us is the progress that children have made since those starting points. So the child that wasn't saying anything a couple of weeks ago, but is now having a short conversation with their friend whilst they're playing together. A big part of the value of that sort of assessment uh, in that kind of learning journey format is that you can share it with children. And there's good research to say that children will make excellent use of that sort of uh, well-chosen photo, the note you jotted down of exactly what the child did or said, you can reflect and talk, to reflect on that with the child and talk about it, um, both soon afterwards, but also maybe a month down the line and help them think about how they've come on in their learning in that past month. Um, there's lots of evidence to say that that helps children to become more powerful learners. So that's really worth doing. Those sorts of accounts of children's learning also really speak to parents. So the parent who is not at all helped by a long list of what band, what age band their child is or isn't in or whether they're emerging or expected, uh, it will very much come alive to that parent if you give them an example of something great that their child has learned. And I think it's also really important to share with parents where children's struggles are, what they're finding difficult. And we find that when you talk in real terms with parents, it brings the child's learning alive and the parents will then say, you know what, that's exactly the sort of thing they do with Lego at the weekend. How interesting that they're now doing it with unit blocks in nursery. And that way we're both learning from each other about what is making this child tick, how we can really help them um, to do the sorts of things they want to do to make that bigger or more complicated structure with blocks and with Lego um, at home. So, so that is also a very good use of um, assessments through that kind of learning journal approach. What you've got to be careful of is two things. First of all, we do have to be systematic, 
we do have to have a system that works for us to make sure that we don't overlook children who are falling behind and not doing so well as other children. So we've got to have that in our system. And the second thing is that learning journals are, are great and they speak to parents really well. They work really well online or on paper. They're adaptable, they support children, but we've just got to be a bit proportionate. We mustn't make it the main part of our job to put together these kind of amazing and huge and beautiful documents. We've got to be proportionate and make sure that what we're doing doesn't become excessive, doesn't dominate our day, our week.